What's going on? It is Elijah here with Gifted Hands Music and I want to welcome you here to the channel. So today we are going to be covering a 6251 chord progression. This is going to kind of be a continuation of the last lesson we did last week. We were talking about a 736, like an advanced approach to a 736 movement. So this is going to be kind of added on to that. Um, and I just want to show you how you can play a lick over the 6251 chord progression. This is taken from that same song, the Jonathan Nelson, Our God version, his version of Our God. So let's jump right into this lesson. So here's the lick that we are talking about today. All right, or let me play it one octave lower. All right, so that is the lick and it is over a 6251 chord progression and we're applying this to the song how great is our god this is a continuation of that um that seven three six lesson that we did last week right so um in context where is this where's this place that we have how great is our god seven three six how great all right and then here we are six two five how one how great so we can put it right there um, if we play a six, two, five, one as a passing progression in this song, then we can kind of put a lick over it. And if you listen to the Jonathan Nelson version, which I'll um, link below, they play, Trip Phillips plays this lick. He plays that lick over the progression um, while the band is playing the chords, you know? So before I pl explain exactly what I'm playing, as far as my right hand goes, I just want to explain kind of the chord approach, what I'm playing in my left hand, right? So we're in the key of D major. So our sixth chord is B minor. So what I'm playing is a B minor seven or B minor nine, whatever, six. And then my two chord is an E dominant or E 13. So I'm playing an E dominant. And then my five chord, five is gonna be a minor. So that's A minor, here's my A minor. And then finally, I have my one chord, which is a D7. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can play like that, like that, however you want to play that D7 chord. Um, so that's it. Six, two, five, one, and then we land on the four. We end on the four. Okay? And that's just a long, like, passing progression to take me to the four chord. Okay, so practice that first, get that down. And then once you do that, then what we're gonna switch and do is because in order for me to play, whoops. In order for me to play that progression in my, or that lick in my right hand, I gotta play left hand chord voicings. And so I'm playing like rootless left hand chord voicings. So we have to play that six, two, five, one in our left hand by itself, okay? So what I'm doing there, is just I'm playing the B minor as a rootless, rootless chord voice, right? So this is my rootless B minor, which is my I got my flat seventh of B, flat seventh, ninth, third, and fifth of B minor. Okay, so this is rootless B minor. Then to get to the two chord, that E, all I got to do is move my pinky down one a half step. All right, so this is my rootless. E13 chord. Why? Because this is my thir my 3, 13, 7, and 9. Okay, so 6, 2, and then 5. This is going to be my rootless 5 or my rootless A minor chord. Once again, this is A minor, so I have my 7th, 9th, 3rd, minor 3rd, and 5th of A minor. And then to get from my five to the one i just move my pinky down again pinky goes down a half step so that's my rootless d dominant d13 all right so once again six two five one and then four this is my four chord or g major seven g major nine i got my major seventh of g i have my nine three fifth okay so that's that six two five one four that's how i'm going to play that six two five one four chord progression in my left hand 
with rootless voicings, okay? So just always remember that the when I'm playing those types of voicings, I'm just thinking in the mindset, hey, my bass player is playing the bass notes. Whoops. So I don't have to play the bass in my left hand. I can kind of just have those rootless chord voicings, okay? So we got that. So now that we have the left hand chord voicings, we have these rootless chord voicings, we can approach the lick now and learn that. So pretty much, pretty much what's going on here is this concept called playing the changes. I just wanna explain this to you briefly. And this is a jazz concept that we can apply to gospel. And so like playing the changes just means that if I wanna play a lick or a solo, all I'm gonna do is take the chord progression that I'm playing, right? So in this case, six, two, B, E, A minor, five, one, D to the four, right? I'm gonna take that progression and I'm just gonna outline the notes of the chords. So playing the changes just simply means I'm taking the chords that I'm playing in the song or the chords that I'm playing myself and I'm using the notes of the chord to create some type of line, to create some type of solo or lick in my right hand, all right? That's summed up briefly. So let's jump into what exactly is going on now that we know that this is like, like using the concept of playing the changes. So what we have here is, let me just break down the lick. So the first part is we're playing a six chord, right? The B minor. So all I'm doing is A, B. That's the seventh and the one. And then what I'm doing is working my way to the three of my, the third of my two chord of E7. So that's A, B, and then two sharp three of the two chord. And so this is the, like the ninth, go up a half step to the third of my two chord. So right here, we're outlining the notes of the six. And then we're outlining the notes of the two chord. And then we're gonna keep going. All right, so yeah, that's six, two. Okay, and then we do da 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 da. So that's just five, the fifth of my two chord, the seventh, the thirteenth. Those are still just outlining the the notes and the extensions of the two chord. And then we have. So now we're at the five chord, which is A minor, right? So all we're doing is. An A minor triad has a C major triad in it, right? A minor seventh chord has a C major triad in it. So I'm just outlining that C major triad. C, E, G, E, or three, five, seven, five of my A minor. Okay. And then we hit that, the one chord, which is D dominant, right? And now I'm just gonna walk down the D major scale. Three, two, one, three, two, one, seven, six, right? Three, two, one, seven, six. And then you see I'm landing on one of the notes of my four chord, of the G major chord. All right, so simply that's the A, B, or five, six, two, three, five, one, seven, flat seven, two, four, two, three, two, one, seven, six, okay? And so just remember that like when I'm playing that lick, I'm pretty much just taking the notes from each chord that I'm playing in my left hand and outlining it. These are notes from my sixth chord. Okay. Notes from the sixth chord. And then I'm outlining the notes of the two chord. Then I'm switching to my A minor chord. So I'm outlining the notes of the A minor chord. And then we get to the D. And we're outlining. We're outlining the notes of the D chord. And then we land on the three of our G. All right, so that's what's going on in that lick. Um, not too, too complicated, but take that. Um, learn this lick with the left hand chord voicings. 
right? And then what you can do is as well, look at some other chord progressions and see how you can apply this concept of like playing the changes, how you can come up with a lick based off of the notes of your chords that you're playing. Mess around with that. That's an idea that'll take you so, so far um, when it comes to improvisation, when it comes to creating licks and runs and things of that nature. You can experiment so much with it. So I hope you all enjoyed this lesson today. Hope you got something from it. Um, if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button below, like this video, share it with a friend, a family member, a fellow musician, somebody who will find this information useful. Let's get the word out about Gifted Hands Music, and I will see you all in the very next lesson.